I'm from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Growing up in a, a tough neighborhood in the, in the city, pretty big industrial, but um, it was good. It was good growing up with me and my little sister and um, you know, just having fun and playing basketball. So my cousins played basketball, my dad played basketball. Um, basketball was in my family. Ever since I was a kid, I just had a basketball in my hand. Um, and then, you know, growing up in the 90s, you see Michael Jordan on TV, you want to be Michael Jordan. Uh, I was just one of those goofy kids that might have had potential when he was growing up, but I was just running around, falling on his face, and you know, she was untied and not really that good until I was about 12 or 13 when the, the height kicked in and the athleticism started to show, and uh, that's when I really got serious with basketball. Here comes Kelly, to fall on the run. Kelly into the front court now, top of the key. Oh, the U Boris jams it in with the right hand. Eric Wallace, sky. It has a lot to do with uh, the media and uh, trying to figure out what you want to do. As a kid, you really don't know what you want to do. You got a mic in your face and you're trying to figure out what school you're going to, what college teams are uh, looking at you. You know, you're in the limelight. My first year, I went to the Ohio State University under Coach Dad Mata. Um, it was uh, a learning year for me. But at the end of the day, I felt I wasn't really happy there. Um, and the coaches saw that and we had a mutual parting and they helped me get to DePaul University. There, I fell in love with the head coach, Jerry Wainwright, and you know, he uh, really molded me in becoming a man and becoming a good basketball player in Chicago. Kelly's got numbers, goes for the alley-oop, Tarek Wallace gets it in a foul. Ouch. He got let go in the middle of the season and we had to finish the season without the head coach, but uh, after that, we got Oliver Purnell, who was a nationally renowned coach. He really liked me, but I broke my shin bone in the preseason. That was another learning experience for me. Sitting on the sideline, thinking you can help a team win a six point, three point loss game. And um, you know, you really can't even do anything but go to rehab the next day because you know, you're out for nine months. You know, I remember January, um, after about two and a half months of rehab, um, had to learn how to walk. Uh, that was a big day for me. I never thought I'd be 22, 23 years old learning how to walk again. Went to Seattle University. I just wanted to have another year playing basketball, have fun. You hope for an NBA team to call you, um, get a tryout or something. Um, you get your agent working, making calls that he can. You know, just the opportunities to keep playing basketball for money and you know, any kid would want to do that. You know, just see the world, play basketball, do what you love to do. At this point, um, AFL was a something I'd seen on TV two years ago, just flipping channels. I remember the teams that was calling with West Coast Eagles, um, and they were showing a, a highlight, a flashback to a highlight of a specky. I was like, he just stood on the guy's shoulders. Said, you can't do that. That's, what game is this? And you look, you see the field is oval, and it's about 40 people on the field, and you know people just yelling for no reason. And uh, I was confused, so I was like, yep, let me turn this. And um, my agent found out that the USAFL, along with the AFL International Department, was looking to expand the game and particularly to American basketball player type players. Free trip to LA and you know do the testing, meet the guys, and you know, I got down there and basically didn't know what to expect. There's some footage where just fumbling the ball, not being able to find it in the air, and you know, just looking like a basketball player like the other 40 guys over there. Mick Ablett, Todd Kennelly, uh, Tony Woods liked me enough to invite me out. It was funny, I didn't even sit down with North Melbourne when I went to the, in the Kanban. About a month and a half later, I'm getting a call saying, could you fly out two days from now to you know, try out for, to work out with North Melbourne? And I was, yeah, I'll get in a plane, yeah, I'll be there. But uh, that's how that happened. It was just um, planning to go right all my life and then a left turn and the next day and I'm, I'm in Australia. It gives me great pleasure to welcome Eric Wallace. I'd like to present you with a jump of 39. Well done. The majority of our training is here in North Melbourne. Occasionally we go up the Friday before and train with the, the North Ballarat guys uh, pre-game. Uh, playing North Ballarat is good. Uh, coach Fitzy is a legendary coach. Um, he's won many premierships with North Ballarat. Uh, he knows what he's talking about. I'm glad he's put the trust in me to, to be the sole Ruckman this year for him. Big jump from Wallace. To look forward and say, I could be you know, a guy to play from North Melbourne. And I just want to play one game. You know, if the player goes down or the player gets out of form or if I get in such a good form that um, I can help a team out you know, here or there. But um, I just want to be able to have Brad put my name on the match committee board and say, let's put him in, let's shake his hand on Wednesday and uh, see him run out white and blue.